from your local election headquarters. The only locally produced political talk show discussing the issues that matter to you. This is Big Country Politics on KTAB. Thanks for being here for this week's edition of Big Country Politics. I'm Victor Sotelo. Let's get first to national politics. The U.S. House of Representatives has approved the National Defense Authorization Act. This, that's the budget for the Department of Defense for the next year. It, pr it pr provides a lot. It provides $738 billion for America's armed forces, and it covers a 3% pay raise for military personnel, funds the sixth branch of the military, the Space Force and gets rid of the so-called Windows tax that military families have been asking to get rid of for years. KTAB Washington Bureau Correspondent Anna Wardenke has more. The most important thing we do in government is defend America. As chairman of the Senate Armed Services Committee, Oklahoma Republican Senator Jim Inhofe says his top priority is passing the National Defense Authorization Act, which directs policy and spending plans for the Defense Department and has been renewed every year for 58 consecutive years. I was fearful that we weren't going to get it done uh, this year. But after months of negotiations, New Mexico Democrat Martin Heinrich says Congress finally agreed on a $738 billion defense bill, days before the current bill expires. Uh, this is not a bill where I think failure should ever be an option. The bill gives the military a 3.1% pay raise, sets aside $5 billion for emergency disaster recovery, and formally establishes the Space Force as a sixth branch of the military. Texas Republican Congressman Will Hurd says the bill increases the military's budget by $22 billion from last year, which would help cover new equipment costs for things like helicopters and fighter jets. Making sure that our men and women that are willing to put themselves in harm's way have the tools they need in order to train and be ready for that fight. Texas Democratic Congressman Lloyd Doggett says he is confident it will pass before the end of the year. Well, I believe it will become law. It is a bipartisan measure. Because if it doesn't, Inhofe says our national security could be in harm's way. Anna Warnicke, KTAB News. And the Senate is expected to pass the money bill next week, if not sooner, and President Trump will sign it into law. Getting to your eye on Taylor County News, aerial fireworks have been banned in Taylor County for the upcoming Christmas and New Year's holiday. The ban prohibits the sale and use of aerial fireworks with sticks and fins. Commissioners voted to approve the ban during a meeting of the commissioner's court, blaming the dry weather conditions. Even with the recent rain we have gotten this week, there is still enough fuel, grass, to, uh, to spread quickly. The regulation also is no fireworks inside the city limits, as it is always, and any town in Taylor County, and only on private property in Taylor County with the permission of landowners. If you're shooting off fireworks, have something nearby that can put out the flames. And Taylor County commissioners voting to put out bids for estimates on asbestos abatement and demolition of the old Taylor County Jail at 341 Pecan Street. The Commissioner's Court holding a public hearing. The court adhering, uh, adhering to the City of Abilene Landmarks Commission request that the commissioners listen to the public before considering the building's demolition. The commissioners say they are still uh, determining the cost of the demolition before making their final decision. Uh, supporter and developer of the Soda District, Tim Smith, stepped up to the podium at the Commissioner's Court meeting. He told the court he once toured the jail and determined if the building could be salvaged. I hightailed it out of there and decided that's not something I would ever tackle. And if I won't tackle it, there's probably very few people in town that will. Smith also mentioned he wants to see more focus on the old Taylor County Courthouse. The to continue revitalization efforts of the South Downtown Abilene. The commissioners will soon be sending out advertisements for estimates on the demolition of that building. And the commissioner's court also looked into the speed limit on this stretch of road, Antley Road from Elm Creek Bridge to Peppergrass Lane. Some folks who live in the area drive it request that the speed limit be lowered from 55 to 45 miles an hour. Residents saying traffic poses a major safety risk to them and Wiley High School is nearby. This is just outside of the Abilene city limits and there is a question as to whether the county or the city has the authority to make the change. It's under study. 
The state of Texas says Taylor County has one of the highest rates of obesity in the Lone Star State and now is going to provide options to make lifestyles healthier. Here's Katherine Garcia. Did you eat your watermelon all gone? Good job. Cynthia Pearson says snack time at Day Nursery of Abilene is used as another teaching moment. It really makes a difference on what you get them. Day Nursery also does family style dining, which you'll see, where children are all sitting together with the staff, and then they learn to pass things to each other, so it's a social, emotional type of a learning, too. Habits like these are an example of how the Abilene Taylor County Public Health Department wants to combat a harsh reality after receiving a grant from the Texas Department of State Health Services. We actually didn't apply for this grant. So instead, we were rewarded, awarded this grant, which isn't necessarily the best thing because it's due to our obesity rate in Abilene being higher than the state average. Health Administration Specialist Christy McQueen says this five-year grant includes five focus areas, including implementing healthy habits at early childhood care centers. Nutrition, physical activity, oral health, and there is breastfeeding in that too. And it's also a great way that it's not just focused towards the kids, but you can also interact with the parents as well. McQueen says issues including a lack of healthy eating options and infrastructure have impacted our community's health. We're very car dependent, and so it's hard to get around if you want to walk somewhere, which is a big factor for physical activity and health. And we have lots of food places here in Abilene, but not too many healthy food places. McQueen says she wants to mirror the progress of other communities, such as Oklahoma City, which rebranded itself after implementing a citywide health program. About 2007, they were named the fattest city. And so within five years, they became the fittest city. The public health department says they hope this grant will be the jumping off point to transform Abilene and Taylor County as one of the healthiest places to live. In Abilene, with coverage you can count on, Catherine Garcia, KTAP News. And the city has put out a survey on healthy eating. If you want to go check it out, go to our website at bigcountryhomepage.com. And still to come on Big Country Politics, analyzing politics, what's going on in the impeachment hearing, and the latest on the race for 2020. We're back in two minutes.